Hey guys, okay, so, um, somebody wanted to know about my TPN because it's soy free, so, yeah, let me just cover up that part, alright, so this is my TPN, um, it's basically IV fluid, okay, and I have, um, several different things on here that need to get added in. So I have this nozzle, I have a locked nozzle, and then I have a nozzle that we spike. And then I have my whole little thing here with my alcohol prep, my heparin, my sharps, um, all of that stuff. So, and then um, there's my regular flush. So here's my pump. Um, and here is my bag from last night. I'm going to actually hand that over to my husband to take care of. Uh, TPN produces a lot of trash, I have discovered. Um, so this is uh, vitamin... Doo -doo -doo, vitamin vial 2. Vitamin vial 1. And then this right here is my Pepsid that I have to add in. So I actually have to take Sharp and do that. I'm gonna grab the Sharp and do that. So I'm gonna pause you and put you, oh, my husband handed me a Sharp. So um, I did wash my hands, but I'm also gonna sanitize my hands. So give me a moment to do that. Got it? Okay, so <clears throat> this is one of my Sharps and this is my Pepsid. Um, so I'm supposed to add four to this. Now, the little trick that I have learned with this is I actually put air into the syringe and then put it in so that I can push that air in. And then I'm going to back the needle down to like the lowest point possible in the bottle. And then it fills up almost on its own until I get right to the very end. And I get every little bit that I possibly can out of this because um, when it comes to my Pepsid, my body really, really needs it a lot more than I ever thought I would need Pepsid. So, um, the next thing I'm going to do is grab an alcohol prep, okay, and I'm going to, as we jokingly say, scrub the, the hub, scrub the hub. Um, so I do flip the rubbing alcohol around, um, three times is generally what I do. And that's just because this, even though it's in a sterile refrigerator, um, these ends are exposed. So now I have to thread the needle in so I don't hit any of the sides. Push the stuff in, pull some fluid back out, push it back in. So I rinse the syringe out that way. And, um, Vitamin vial number one. Uh, this one is, it's an interesting color. What is it? It's upside down. Sorry. It didn't focus. Um, right. It's got vitamin C, A, D, uh, vitamin B1, B2, B6, uh, vitamin E, and vitamin K. Um... It basically has, like, the essentials for, you know, human life. And it's a lovely yellow color. I jokingly said the first time I ever had this type of TPN that I was never going to get over the fact that it was yellow like pee. Because in the hospital, um... I actually had a darker one, and it was, like, super horrible. All right, so this is vitamin number two. And again, pop the top <coughs> off. Fill my syringe with some air. 
And um, this one has the folic acid and biotin and B12. I mix them in the syringe because I know that my total needs to be a full syringe. And this way, I know that I got everything in here in the correct amount because sometimes with these vials um, it's kind of hard to like you'll get every drop if you know how to do it correctly but um, a lot of the time there's just so much stuff so see I actually have like a little bit over but I also have to get the air out and of course even like rinsing the syringe now my this has been up in the air the entire time so I don't need to scrub it again so I just need to carefully insert the needle again and then push it through which slowly changes the whole color of the bag to cheap beer <laughs> Yeah, my husband calls it cheap beer. Look. So. Alright, and again I flush the syringe. I put my cap on. Then I unscrew this so that when I put this in the sharp, it takes up way less space than this and that. Okay, and then um, with the bag... Yeah, we have to actually, like, massage the the junkiest stuff into it. And I call it junky just because I hate that yellow color. So I have a bag that I put it in so that I don't have to look at it the entire time because I, um, this is over, uh, 20 hours I take this, so... Basically, I'm only off of it for four hours a day. So, this is my infusion set. Um, it's a little different than a regular giving set, and that's because it has um, this filter on it, which I actually personally really, really like because say any of those vitamins didn't get dissolved correctly uh, from the bag, they'll end up going through here, get stuck in here, and then the IV fluid will go through and like slowly dissolve them over time. So there's a cap on this end and a cap on this end. So this remains sterile until I like do something with it. Now with me, I have these little hubs on me. Uh, this is my blood return is white. My purple is my TPN. Um, I'm actually quite happy to have two lines because then um, I know that, you know, one, I'm good, and two, the fact that um, with this, it's a lot easier so when I go to get blood work done and everything I just wait uh, to start my TPN because I flush it immediately afterwards so then it's good and then they flush this get a flashback and then can do my blood work every week um, it's very important to have your blood work done every week when you have TPN and a pick line um, because since I've left the hospital, uh, this is going on day nine, so I left the hospital ten days ago. Um, I have lost ten pounds, so roughly I lose a pound a day, um, which is not ideal, but it works for me because, thankfully... Before all this happened, I was a little bit overweight. So because I was a little bit overweight, I had um, I had room to lose. 
um, most of the time when somebody's put on TPN, um, because it is such a last resort thing, it is not, um, they really don't have the weight to lose. So, yay, I was able to do that with my fingers. Woohoo. Uh, there's been times where that little white cap on the flush has caused me so much grief. So, this is where it gets a little difficult because this one does not have the extension on it, nor do I want the extension on it because I, uh, just don't want to be bothered with having the mistake of accidentally attaching to the wrong line. So I'm going to slowly push the, uh, the flush through. I do this every morning. I push the flush through. It gives me a god-awful taste. Um, sometimes it's made me so nauseous that I've actually gotten sick, which is why the Pepsid in my TPN is so important now because I do not um, throw up as much because I have the Pepsid and I'm on a uh, steady diet of roughly four Zofran a day, sometimes a little bit more. It's the dissolvable kind because I cannot swallow. So it just, it makes it more and more difficult, but you know, it's okay. I know that, you know, God has a plan for whatever reason I'm stuck like this right now, and it works. So, flushing my first line. Um, this one doesn't have that big of a, a deal. Just the taste is really funny. The other thing is I also have to flush with heparin next. And um, the heparin is... 5 mils. Um, I was told that I could put up to two of these in my line. Unfortunately, I am very, very, very sensitive to things like heparin. Um, because of what it does is thin out the blood, make sure that I don't clot. Um, it's one of those things that tends to make me feel even more nauseous and I bruise like so easily even though my nurse that comes at once a week has told me oh no there's no possible way that this heparin could have contributed to your bruising so this sleeve that I have is an antimicrobial sleeve so when it covers my lines Arg. When it covers my lines, I don't get um, as much dirt in them, but I still, you know, scrub them and everything else. And this special blue cap here is also a special type of um, thing to keep out the antimicrobial stuff. So, I'll just slowly push this in. I did have a little bit of an air bubble in that, but it doesn't really matter because where my line is it's not a hickman my line is in my arm because it's a pick um i was told that a small amount of air doesn't really do much of anything so i clamp it after that unspin it throw that out then it's time to work with this line this is actually my TPN line. I do have the same clip at the bottom here. Um, it's a Max 5. Um, it's one of the nicer clips I've actually had. It's unlike this type of clip that comes on my um, infusion set. This one, for some odd reason, anytime I'm in the sleeve, I pop it off. So... Thankfully, they took it off of my extension, my nurse did, because he's totally awesome. So, with this, again, I have to be very careful and deliberate with everything that I do, because pick lines are notorious for allowing infection in. So, 
The other thing that I have to do while I'm still holding this like this is I check here and you can see that nice little yellow tinge that's from when I got my bandage change and that was the uh, scrub that they had to put and then I have the ring to prevent the um, tegaderm patch from touching uh, where the actual line comes out of my arm and then I have an anchor so I always check that every day as well but I figured I would get it on camera this time um, and again I have to flush this line before I start ah, sorry about that my ear um, and the reason I have to flush it before I start is I have to make sure that it's properly working because the way my body is, I have rejected so many bloodlines, it's not even funny. During my 12-day hospital stay, I got stuck 14 times for IVs. And I literally looked like a bruised up pin cushion up and down both of my arms until um, we were able to get the stuff in. Now, this one I tend to do a little bit more slowly because I don't know if it's, um, if it's closer because they told me that I have, I have like the, um, the hollow catheter line that you saw coming out of my arm and that stops here but then these two internal lines go a little bit further past um, to be above my heart valve um, and those ones this one seems to be like one I get more off of I guess is the way to put it like I I taste it more I feel it more sometimes it's rather uncomfortable um, but the other thing with my TPN that I'm actually like really happy about is the fact that because I don't have soy in my TPN, um, it's not light sensitive. So because it's not light sensitive, I can just leave it in this type of bag and not have to like worry about having, you know, all this contraptions to kind of keep it from the light. So... It gets to be a little difficult. All right, so I'm going to leave this attached so that I don't have to scrub this hub again. All right, and then my pump, um, it's a very nice, easy to deal with pump. Um, it has like the color code system. There's a yellow dot here, a blue dot here that matches what's on the line. And then it has like a program that's already in there from my pharmacist, so I don't have to do much of anything. Um, the unfortunate thing with the TPN right now is, um, well, it's not really unfortunate. It's It can go both ways. Um, they give me C batteries to deal with this because I don't have the adapter piece to plug it into the wall which does save us on electricity um, and makes it a lot easier so I don't have to worry about like traveling. I can just have it in my bag and do whatever and get into my wheelchair and you know go somewhere. But um, yeah, I'm going through <laughs> two C batteries every day. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, when I was at the hospital and they trained me on how to do this, um, it was very easy to understand, very straightforward. Uh, thankfully, because of the people that I go through for this, um, they program the pumps, so there's quite literally no worrying for me to do on, like, how to taper it down or taper it up. It's just a solid program. Um, the company that I use is... This one right here. We get a handy dandy blue folder. So um, all of my shipments, I get paperwork that goes into this folder. Um, there's uh, stuff in here for like all sorts of stuff. 
in regards to like what I'm getting, why I'm getting it, and then um, I get a thing called a lab in a box. Um, let me grab that off the shelf. So this actually has everything I need to have my labs drawn. Um, this way, my nurse who comes in just has to open up this box. It has a cooler in it. Um, it's got a uh, thing to send out. So it goes to LabCorp. Um, it has all sorts of instructions with it. And it's fairly simple to use. I could actually draw my own lab <coughs> if needed, if the pharmacist at the company told me to do so. Um, but they have the nurse do it because at the same time is when I get a dressing change. Alright, so this is going towards the bag. Here is my yellow end and my blue end. Again, it has another security thing. Basically to make sure that we know that the line is good. This also has a um, cap here that has to get punctured. So, I always have a bit of trouble with this. The, um, the actual spiking of the bag is worse. So it just kind of rests in there and it's got like springs in it so it gets loaded. And then this just slides into the little square part where the blue is. And I have to bring it forward so it's above that clip. And then lock it in now. All right. You want me to spike it? So then it goes like this all the way down to this end. So I'm going to turn my pump on and then I'm going to take the camera from my husband so he can spike the bag because unfortunately I'm a bit of a weakling. So. It's really tough spiking the bag. I have it's got to get up in here. Yeah, I have way too much difficulty with this. So thankfully, I have a very strong husband. I'm who struggling takes... with this today. <laughs> well, everybody struggles at different times. So while he's attempting to do that, I'll show you this. So it has program and library. I'm just going to go to my program. And see it has repeat RX and then it has new program. Um, the new program, I cannot put anything in there because they have a special code that they have to put into the pump. So, because they have to do that, I don't have to mess with it. So I can just hit yes for this. And then it goes through all of its systems. And it has where it ramps up for an hour and then ramps down for an hour. I think it's in. Alright, so then this gets to come off. And this is sterile underneath here. So I'm going to hand the camera over to my husband again. While I prime my bag. Well, prime my line. Alright, so I'm going to take this off and then I just hold it over the trash can. Now, on this machine, it's one of the more difficult things to do is to prime it. So, I actually have to hold down this green button at the bottom. And every so often, it doesn't want to stay down. I don't know if it's a fault of the pump or a fault of my body not wanting to do it. But then it also tells me how many um, mills it's gone through. And we spiked it. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so it usually takes about seven, which is a little bit less than the syringe that I use to flush to actually prime this line. So it's, you know, relatively easy. When it comes to the filter, though, that's when it takes its longest because it has to load up this filter with liquid and then go through and come out the other side. So, but again, I really like the fact that I have 
a filter. So. It just takes a little bit of time. And as you can see, my EDS is acting up because I think normal fingers aren't supposed to bend this way. I get told that all the time. Ooh. Ow. All right. Just a little bit more. There, there we go. All right. 6.6 .6 mils. And then I unscrew this. Now, I have my arm outside of my shirt because um, this way just makes it easier for me because I actually wrap this around my neck and then I run a uh, ribbon through here by the filter and tie it to my bag so that it doesn't get pulled out of the pump or <coughs> me as easy. So I wrap it like this and do it around so that my clamp is up and then this one goes next to it and then I can fold this here and that'll hold that in place and then this will go here. I try not to have anything touch that disc that's under here because one it gets really aggravated <laughs> and everything so yes unattended okay Resume options. My uh, pump just yelled at me because I didn't start my thing when I plugged it into me. So again, it's going to go through all of the options again. Alright, then I'm going to hit run. And now my TPN has started for the day. And I am good for the next 20 hours because of not being able to swallow. It's even harder for me to drink. It took about three and a half days to try and drink one liter of fluid. So basically think about a soda bottle and think about that taking you two days, maybe a little bit more to drink. And that's how my swallow is affected. <laughs> So I, um, I have to do a lot of things to make sure that I stay hydrated and that my blood work comes back good and that I have all my vitamins. Um, I made the mistake one day of attempting to suck on a Skittle because I, I miss sweets because I'm a big sugar person and I miss tasting sweets. So I sucked on a Skittle and lost my voice for a day. And it hurts so, so bad. So, needless to say, I'm very choosy now about what it is that I attempt to taste. So, that honestly didn't take that long to set up. It's usually about 20-30 minutes each morning um, that I have to do to set this up. I'm off of it only for four hours out of the entire day. Um, and that is how I set up my TPN. Um, and now I'm ready to, you know, attempt to go do things and, like, pick up this heavy, heavy bag, because this is, uh, 2,000 mils, so it is, it is rather heavy and a pudgy bag, so I put it in here to carry to make it easier on me, to give it a better handle, so, all right. I hope that was informative to the person who wanted to know about my TPN and how it works. And um, there you go. The soy-free version is more common than um, a lot of people actually know. So it actually took the hospital a good two days to try and figure out if they could even make me a soy-free version because they only had the soy-free and didn't realize that all you have to do is inject vitamins into IV fluid. So, alright, thanks. Bye.